Welcome to this episode of the Orange Nerd Show. We have Matthew Murr all the way from the UK joining us today about what might the Walt Disney Company look like post Bob Iger. Fascinating conversation today. I got Matthew Murr. I got, of course, the Italiano with me up next on this episode of the Orange Nerd Show. Welcome aboard, everybody, to another episode of the Orange Nerd Show presented by OG55, right? <laughs> this, is our, this is the show that we're doing uh, on the channel where we talk about everything except the theme parks, where we talk about corporate, we talk about movies, nerd culture, Marvel, Star Wars, maybe even some K-pop soon. We'll see. I might be doing a little reaction video very soon. We'll see. But uh, before before we <laughs> dive into the festivities, uh, I'll like to introduce uh, Mr. Italiano. George, welcome back to the show, brother. Thank you for having me back on. And uh, yeah, that would be uh, a very interesting uh, recording, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk. It's a little yeah. idea. George doesn't know about it yet, but he's, he's going to be there. So, George, <laughs> <laughs> George, if you could let everybody at home know where they can find you on social media, sir. Absolutely. You can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Disney George. You could also find me on Instagram under the Disney Italiano. And, of course, you'll find me here on my home base at Orange Grove 55 with Citrus Corner <clears throat> with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. There we go, Mr. Sticky Sticky. And then down below, we have the one, the only we, family member here on the channel, Mr. Matthew Murr, all the way from the UK. Matthew, it is always a pleasure to have you on, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Now, Matthew, if you could remind everyone where they can find you on social media, sir. You you can find me on Twitter. No, not, not Twitter, sorry. You can find me on Instagram at Matthew Thomas Muir. It's all one word. Perfect. perfect. And I will be linking Matthew's um instagram in the description so make sure you click on it and and follow him on instagram really passionate passionate disney fan and um a lot of great insights so make sure you you follow matthew on instagram all right gentlemen let's dive in so bob Iger has stated you know he's not going to be there forever you know despite the rumors you know he's not he's not palpatine he's gonna eventually you know <laughs> he's gonna go away you know and um i think what he has like another couple years left i think of his contract right so what will the Walt Disney Company look like when Iger eventually leaves? Now, it's going to be a, this is kind of a tough conversation because we're kind of speculating a lot here because we don't know who his successor is going to be. But Matthew, I'm going to start with you. So Bob Iger leaves. Where do you think we're at with the Walt Disney Company once he steps down? I think investment in Florida is probably going to skyrocket once again like it did during the Eisner era. I don't know there's been a great deal of concern regarding the lack of investment since Eisner's departure. Now, now what, it is, what is it about Iger leaving that you think is going to spur that growth in Florida? It, it might be the fact that, that whoever succeeds him might be more politically neutral. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. I might, might be a better deal maker with this answers. Yeah, that's true. And then DeSantis is even on his way out. I think he can't. Um, uh, I think he's out like in a year and a half, or maybe or two years. Maybe he he he's can, not allowed to run for president. Yeah, yeah, he he yeah he's he's done with pres the presidential run, and then uh, well this time around, and then he he can't run for governor again. He's termed out. So we'll see what governor we have after that, and yeah, that might change the equation as well. Interesting theory, though, Matthew. Very interesting theory. Now, George, you're you're a Disney World guy, right? That's why you have the Citrus Corner show here on yes. the channel. What are your thoughts? Do you think that's this is possible that we're going to see it like the uh, kind of like a kind of like a a boom over there at, at Walt Disney World, where where you know because it you know Disney World has been in a little bit of a drought, you know that. Once Iger leaves, we're going to start seeing it really ramp up again. Is that possible? It, it very well could be. I think because, uh, as, as you have stated and as Matthew has stated, that uh, it, it looks like Iger and DeSantis are both going to be taking the exit door around the same time. And, uh, yeah, depending on who uh, Iger's uh, successor is and who's going to take the place of DeSantis, it very well could be. Uh, Walt Disney World's kind of time to shine because I think right now Disney's main focus when it comes to the parks go is um, leaning more towards Disneyland forward, the international parks, uh, even the cruise line. Um, right. But Disney World kind of has that short end of the stick and I think it has to do with the politics like that's going on within Florida. So I it very well could be um, 
yeah, as soon as Iger uh leaves you know and i do feel like you know it it is his time you know when he does leave i do not believe that he should be leaving abruptly right now as a lot of people claim he should it is not in best interest of the company to have him leave and then who who are you going to appoint as ceo on the fly and isn't that the issue we had in the first place was that he didn't really do the succession plan the first time exactly really he threw the keys over to chafe back and said hey you deal with it now we got the pandemic and the whole thing mm-hmm. that was the problem back then so it's like i don't understand that mentality where people are like yeah you know just i mean respectfully you know what i'm saying i mean people have their opinions and that's fine but i don't understand that mentality i get it if you don't like bob Iger, i get it if you think he's woke but yeah this cutting bait and le- having him leave early is not exactly the best move right now like i think it's actually to- quite dangerous oh absolutely matthew absolutely right. right for the company's sake so i said it before and i'll say it again so everyone out there listening listen to the words that are coming out of my mouth <laughs> just because i say that Iger should not leave now doesn't this- mean he- you don't think he should leave at all exactly thank you I do believe he needs to go, just not right now. He has to go during the appropriate time that I feel like now that the company is getting up on its feet, you have to take appropriate action when it is needed. When you do that knee-jerk reaction, sometimes the grass is not greener on the other side. It can end up becoming worse. Right, exactly. So you have to look, I understand you don't like the guy. That's fine. But you have to also understand that if you cut bait now, Bob Iger leaves now, you're talking that they replaced two CEOs in in like a year and a half, pretty much. That would be so I agree with Matthew. That's super dangerous for the Walt Disney Company. And I get it. You don't like Bob Iger. And I have a lot of issues with what Bob Iger in this return in in the in his second was as our friend hedge calls it Iger 2.0 right right Iger 2.0 has made mistakes a lot of them have been pr yeah. mistakes a lot of a lot of issues he's not perfect we use that term 2.0 quite a bit we do we use 2.0 quite a bit yeah. Matthew. absolutely and so he has his problems right but just because he has his problems doesn't mean that you cut you cut your nose off to spite your face you have to let the succession plan see it through, and then then we get the proper succession, and then we have a new CEO, whether him, her, whoever, then we know who we have, and now we can go from there. But if you cut bait now, after just a year and a half, after a cut of firing Chapek, that's bad news bears. The stock is finally rebounding. Why would you get rid of them now? That makes no sense. And because the stock is now rebounding, now once the company kind of levels out a bit which it is the start of and that was that was the company's prediction in 2024 they were going to see a bounce back in stock they were going to see a bounce back in the company itself so we are on that uphill climb while we are in the process now is the time for Iger to kind of and even the board you know to kind of look at you know who can kind of take the place you know so they right. so mistakes aren't happening again where history repeats itself you yeah, know you don't really want... have to be careful of who you're putting in there you can't this is a big decision here and you can't do knee-jerk reactions you know what i'm saying and i understand i sympathize honestly with a lot of the walt disney world fans i do i sympathize we have a, we have a good friend of the channel gator fan he's awesome we love gator fan um we don't always see eye to eye with gator fan but i don't care about that i always have fun talking to gator you know what i'm yeah, saying absolutely. on twitter and stuff he's a great guy yeah. And um, and he doesn't yeah. seem to mind not being able to see eye to eye to you all the time. Exactly. Oh yeah, he'll exactly. come right out and say it. He's like, you know, <laughs> I disagree. You know, is, but yeah. I respect your opinion. You know, he and I have conversations anymore. You know, I mean, you know, we we got it. We got to despite that special access that we get from Bob Iger every time, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but no. Here's the thing, though, right? With Gator fan, he's very concerned. He's a big Walt Disney World guy, right? And he he has concerns over you know the 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 state of walt disney world right now and rightfully so and there's a lot of people right now that have a lot of concerns over the state of walt disney world right now and i understand bob Iger has never been look at honestly if you're a disney world fan bob Iger has not been the best ceo even Iger 1.0 was Mm -hmm. super great you know what i'm saying 
he's always had a California bias and an international park bias. He's not a huge fan of Florida for some reason, even before DeSantis. Um, so I understand that. And I do empathize with Floridians who are like, like really hungry for like expansions and, and big things to come to Florida, but we still have to be, just be patient. We have to wait this yeah. out. And hopefully the next person that, that takes his place will be a little bit more, um, fair in terms of you know the distribution between and i kind of you know. hope that the next person is a little bit more believe it or not more eisner-esque a little bit where they're they're their business you know that they, they, they want to strive for the company but they're not always that suit and tie type of person you know i would love to see someone kind of you know put on the mouse ears you know go into the park and mingle with the people but still get stuff done yeah. tomorrow yeah. <laughs> well, see, Bob Iger isn't really like a suit and tie guy. He's more of like a really like a like you know like a five hundred dollar dress shirt, like yeah. buttoned open a little bit. Buttoned you know, open a little bit. Tie, yeah. You know, totally like, <laughs> yeah. he's like the Disney Tony Stark sort of right. The yeah, dollar, like, yeah that, You know that that's Iger. You know what I'm saying that's his yeah. style. But we'll see. We'll see. I mean, what do you what are your what are your thoughts, Matthew, on on, on this in terms of like you know um, the what what george is talking about where it's like the kind of the approach right like would you want to see more of an eisner style ceo like that rocks the mickey ears wears the mickey sweatshirts and all that stuff or do you kind of like just hey i don't care what he's wearing he can wear the the the, the eiger gq look and as long as he's getting the <laughs> i would rather he just take a what is whatever look or give with issues because in my opinion the look does very little yeah well that's true that's just true look at daddy jaw <laughs> I know, look at Daddy Josh, right? Exactly, exactly. Now, in terms of, okay, so I, in terms of the studio landscape, I think that this is where I think we're going to see the most change at the Walt Disney Company. Um, linear TV is dying on the vine. Uh, Bob Iger has said, I mean, he wants to transform ESPN into like the, you know, a, a massive streaming service, you know, where, where like that's where people go for for, for their sports, you know, they're trying to, they're trying to kind of break off from the whole linear classic TV sort of thing. And they're going more into the digital streaming side of things. Where do you see this, Matthew? Where do you see the studio side, whether it be, um, you know, with TV, whether it be even with movies, whatever, where do you see that post Bob Iger? I, I think they're just going to pour all, all the efforts into, into Disney plus and also films they are just gonna ditch tv altogether tv in my opinion linear that is has just well and truly had it at this point so do you think they might sell abc off or do you think that that because there was concerns we've had you on the channel before matthew where we thought that might you think so you think that's still on the table that's interesting what do you think george do you think that's still on the table abc might might get the the boot free form all that good stuff I know you're. I know you're a big Pretty Little Liars fan, so I don't yeah. know how you're take that the free form <laughs> news, but yeah. I don't know. See, see, ABC is kind of like teetering for me. You know, obviously ESPN isn't going anywhere. I mean, that that's major cash flow for the Walt Disney Company. Yeah, um, they're actually not even. Not only is it not going anywhere, it's like they're like all chips are in with ESPN. I think. Yeah, yeah. ABC, I, I think. They're kind of waiting it out to see maybe like if there's another kind of format that they can use, you, you know, the platform of ABC. Um, but I mean, if it ends up where it's like not doing so hot as time goes on, it very well could be where it gets the axe, they sell it off, you know, make a little dough out of it. Right, right. Well, it could be a situation where they get like maybe like you have like they almost turn ABC into like a brand, so to speak, where it's like when you go on a Disney Plus, there's an ABC tile. And so the stuff from ABC Studios, which I think like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., that show was in conjunction with Marvel and ABC Studios, like the ABC branding stuff would be in, in the ABC tile. It could be like its own little tile, maybe I th when, if, when they fully break away from like the whole TV thing. I, I mean, that's maybe a possibility. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. And now Disney has announced recently, and I'm not a sports guy. Okay. I'm admittedly not a sports guy, but they have, they have a, ven a, a, a venture now, a joint venture with, uh, Warner brothers and Fox, Fox, Fox sports, not the Fox that they own. Right. And it's, it's, it's a, it's a, what it's a streaming thing with, um, all the sports stuff. And uh, Matthew, have you heard of this? Have you heard of this, this joint venture between these three companies? And I what don't are your thoughts? Have, actually, 
You haven't? Okay. Yeah, it's a joint venture between Fox, Disney, and WB. It's actually being investigated right now, you know, <laughs> the regulators and all that stuff. But, but George, what are your thoughts on that? Because that plays into this whole post-Iger world we're going to live in. You know, do you think this is a good move for them? I mean, I, I really, I honestly, like, I can admit when I'm not too – um, ver not well versed in things, and I am not a sports person. Like I couldn't tell you who played in the Super Bowl. I, I don't really care about sports at all. But I have heard about this news. I mean, it seems like a big deal. I mean, with these three companies joining forces, you it's, think it could be a game changer? It's definitely a big deal. It's a smart move. I think teaming up with them because that way, one company over the other won't get really ahead of the other. They can kind of just have it as like a a fifty fifty kind of done deal. Um, as I said, with ESPN with sports. <laughs> It, it'll it'll never die down. I think it'll only grow uh, stronger. You know, with the many different teams, with the many different sports. I mean, well, sports it, is an evergreen thing. I mean, yeah, it's not, you and, know. and honestly, and it's a nice platform. Take the Super Bowl for instance. You know, they dropped a lot of trailers. You know, Deadpool three, they um, uh, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. It's a great source that because people tune in, uh, one hundred twenty three million people. You know, and then you kind of showcase your other formats that are part of the company. It gets the word out. Oh, it does. I remember le the sequel trilogy. I was so pumped for like Force Awakens and things like that. And I remember Disney would utilize Monday Night Football to drop the new trailer. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and they wouldn't tell you what time. It would just be sometime during Monday Night Football. And I used to hate that because it was like I had to sit through a football game. <laughs> and I hate football. And it was like having to chew through the box to get to the pizza, you know? <laughs> it's, it's like you trying to dig through the box of cereal to get the little prize at the end. I'm the telling you, man, it was horrible. But but I get but I get it though. From a business standpoint, it makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of eyeballs on football and things like that, so it makes a lot of sense. Um, go ahead, George. I do apologize, sir. Oh no, go no, ahead. you're good. So I think honestly, it's it's a win win uh, yeah. for for the com for for these companies because that way they get the views, they get the ratings off of the the sports channels, um, which essentially would become part of the streaming and then uh yeah i mean they drop trailers you know and everything it's a it's an all the way around where it's like it's good for it's good for one is good for the other well and here's the other thing too and this kind of dove dovetails into who might succeed bob Iger, but kevin meyer and tom stags were brought in as consultants for the linear tv stuff mm -hmm. and there's been a lot of moves being made on that front I'm assuming they're involved with this because they were brought in as consultants, you know, to do so. And I think they would be the perfect power power duo, honestly, to kind of take over Iger. Because again, I do think a dual partnership is what's best for the Walt Disney Company when it comes to uh, CEO. Tom Staggs was already in the company. He kind of gives off that Michael Eisner kind of feel, like, like that nerdy, he, like coolness, right? Yeah, but he could still sport, you know, a suit and tie. You know, he still knows the business, but he knows how to come down to to people's level. You know, he was chairman of the parks. Um, he was supposed to be CEO. I think that he was the rightful CEO. Um, that was supposed to uh, uh, take over, take over for Bob Iger. But it, I, I feel like that's where the board did him dirty. I really do. Um, and to, to have him kind of come back full circle, and then Kevin Meyer kind of take over the 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 analytical financial business side of it, just like how Roy did and Frank Wells before him. I think that'd be perfect. Yeah, I mean Meyer. I'm telling you, man. You should look up, look back at some of my older videos when I was just go, when I was just flying solo. You know, back in the day, I, I was I was so bullish on Kevin Meyer because Kevin Meyer was the dude in the room for all these acquisitions. That uh, that that really the acquisitions were the were the, were the were the was the heartbeat of basically Bob I Bob Iger's success. I mean, anytime you talk about Bob Iger. And his success story at Disney, it's all about these acquisitions, you know, mm -hmm. Lucasfilm, Marvel, uh, Pixar, all this stuff, right? Fox is kind of iffy, but for the most part, these acquisitions are really kind of solidified his legacy. And it was Meyer who was in that room with him the entire time with all those acquisitions. And it's like, it surprised me that he he got he got overlooked for Chapek. And I'm like, I... I that blew my mind, but now it seems like you know they brought Kevin Meyer back in and they brought Tom Staggs back in, and I feel like he, they're finally kind of getting the respect they deserve. And here's the thing: I think Bob Iger has acknowledged his mistake. 
You think he has, Matthew? You think that's why yeah. he brought them in and he was like, you know what? I, I, because it no, feels really like, a, do you feel, Matthew, that it's a lack of confidence in, in Dana Walden and, and Daddy Josh that he had to bring them, them in in well, the first place? Certainly. Really? Yeah. So would, would you say they're the front runners right now for CEO, Matthew? Absolutely, I would. And, and I think you're pretty bullish on them, right? You, you like both of those gentlemen? If I'm not mistaken, I think you. Yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah. I mean, from your lips to God's ears, Matthew, I, I hope that's who gets it because I think they have the chops and they've proven it over and over and over again. I don't know what what Bob what Bob Chapek had on Bob Iger to get <laughs> to get that position, but it's just like you know he. And again, that was that was Iger's downfall. I'm sorry, he left the company when honestly he really shouldn't have. He left abruptly. Well, it was, and to be honest, it was it was to save Iger's legacy. And we've made many videos on this. A lot yes. of people say that we're Bob Iger stills. We're not. I, I leaned into Iger so hard after that. Yeah. I was like, Bob Iger, how dare you put your legacy, your personal legacy, above this company, this 100-year-old company. And that's exactly what he did. He saw the pandemic coming, and he was like, you know what? I got to leave before this tarnishes my image. Mm -hmm. And so he threw the keys to Chapek and said, deal with it. Yeah. You know, and I get it. To be fair to Iger, he did stay on. He was like, uh, uh, you know, what was he, chairman of the board or something like. You know, he he had a, a role, I think, for like a year. Yeah, it was or something. like a like a consultant type of thing, like, he, like behind the scenes. Yeah, he yeah he was he was in, he was in the company, but it was like yeah he wasn't the CEO, but he he was kind of working the behind the scenes thing. But just that whole thing just didn't really judge. Which didn't that really didn't make right. sense to me because if he was still in the company working behind the scenes, it's like then why didn't you just stay as CEO? Because yeah. if you stay to CEO, that's too public facing. Mm. So if you're chairman of the board, it's a little bit more behind the scenes in the shadows. Mm. But if you're CEO during the pandemic, then when the stock starts to tank and all your parks are closed and there's no movie theaters, it's on Bob Iger. I, I will say, though, one of the most cringiest moments I ever seen was I think it was during the Walt Disney World 50th anniversary kind of like a commemorative you know, ceremony to start up. And both Iger and Chapek stood up on that castle uh, for a court oh, stage. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is like cringy. It's like. Bro, you, you could have cut the tension with a knife. <laughs> it was thicker than fog. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it was so. Do you remember that, Matthew? Did you, did you ever see that? It was awful. <laughs> it was, Matthew. I agree. It was awful. Absolutely awful. These men do not like each other at all. No. At all. And Chapek, I think Chapek got a new job. I forgot where it was at, but he's on the board somewhere now. Good for him. At least he moved on, you know. But I tell yeah. you I tell you what, I know uh OG, you sport that that Bob Iger uh Cardigan? Uh uh no, the uh the book. Oh the, the book, uh, yeah. The, the book, yeah. Yeah. But I I tell you what though. I, the day that Chapek comes out with his, that oh. like of what really went down, you want to see a New York Times bestseller off the shelves? <laughs> I tell you, Chapek, do it. Chapek, do it. And and he should. Bob Chapek should be sitting in a big chair with some tea and just have the book called Tea Time with Chapek, and it would make a bajillion and a half dollars. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But I'm telling you, he is NDA'd from here to the end of time. Probably, he yeah. can't say a word. Mm -hmm. He cannot say a word. No. Yeah, they, he's, they, they silenced him. There's no way. But, um, okay, so let's dip into animation now a little bit. Matthew, I know you're a big animation fan, a big, a passionate animation fan. Uh, we've had I'm you a bullish lot. on hand-drawn. And you're bullish on hand-drawn. And so am I, actually. I, I love hand-drawn. What do you think, Matthew, post Iger, the state of animation? Because animation right now, not just Disney, though. The whole industry is really kind of in a – it's going through it. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of families don't want to spend a, bajillion, a lot of money – to go to the theater, they can watch this, these cartoons, the animation, the animated films in, on streaming. Unless it's like Super Mario or something major, they're just not going to the theaters, right? What is the future of Disney animation post Bob Iger, in your opinion, Matthew? I think they're probably going to try and find a bit of a balance between hand drawn and CGI again, rather than just going completely cold turkey on either one format or the other, because they can't just go cold turkey on one or the other, can they? No, and I think that hand drawn has proven itself to still be very, very popular. You know, um, it just has. I mean, we've had a lot of success. Look, Once Upon a Studio, we've talked about that many times here on the channel, right? That was 
by and large a very popular um short we we've seen a lot of this hand-drawn stuff even wish while it didn't do good in, in in theaters i think most people would agree that the hybrid animation looked really stunning you know between the the hand-drawn and the um class i mean the, and the cgi you know it, there's this embrace from from fans to sort of have different styles of animation right now and not just the, the like what you're playing behind you the tangled classic cgi look i think people want hand-drawn people want maybe like wish where it's like a a hybrid you know they want them to dabble in these different forms of animation and i think that they will matthew i agree with you go ahead george and and even marvel is starting to kind of you know take the hint off of that they, they do it like with the uh the what if series where oh, yeah. it's not necessarily like fully uh cell animation or 2d animation or uh computer animation and then we have the uh the x-men, X-Men 90. 97 coming out i mean and that's not even just hand-drawn animation that almost that arkens back to actually like nine true stylish 90s uh hand-drawn animation like they're taking inspiration from where exactly where the show left off and continued where it's like it, it, it's seamless like yeah. where it, it, you can't really tell one from the other yeah no absolutely another thing too that that i want to pose to you guys okay because hand-drawn animation is if they were to do like a full a full-blown you know hour and a half two hour animated movie in hand-drawn animation right that would require a lot of money to be honest because you, now you have to bring in the hand-drawn animated stuff to do that like the materials the you know all that stuff like now i think they have some of that at the studio but do they have and all also that? their second complex in vancouver because you know in 2021 they opened a second studio to they, supplement the one in burbank they did they did that's absolutely correct and that's actually where the moana um the new Moana 2 is actually, uh, I think, produced, if I'm not mistaken. But, like, so it's going to cost them money, though, to, like, to really go all in on hand-drawn again. Do you think it's possible that they don't do actual hand-drawn, but they do they use the computer to give, to make, give it the hand-drawn look? So yeah, I think it, that's what they do. I think that's what we did with Once Upon a Studio as well. What they did was they made the initial drawings and then just used something like the cat system to to apply the ink and paint digitally. That's what they're probably just going to do from now on. And, I, that's, and that's to my point. Perfect. Thank you, Matthew, for that. And, and I, I, I want to ask you, are you okay with that, Matthew? If it looks like hand-drawn but isn't necessarily done in the same processes, is that okay? Or do you prefer them to do, like, the painted cells and the whole I'm, thing? I'm fine with, with the style introduced in the 90s. You're fine with the style introduced in the 90s? Yeah. And, okay. And what about you, George? Would you be fine with hand-drawn looking hand-drawn but not necessarily done – with paper and painted cells where it's hand drawn on the computer Mm -hmm. painted on the computer. Would you be okay with that? Uh, Ideally I would love the traditionalized kind of hand drawn animation, but I mean, I, I can uh, settle for, you know, as long as it looks, looks crisp and clean um, where it doesn't necessarily look like a computer made the, the 2d, the 2d animation, so to speak, but where it just kind of like fits in nicely, then you know, I would, I'll definitely take it over not having it at all. Yeah, no, I think I would, I would, I would concur. I think that you do have to modernize. I understand there's, there's a huge expense with doing it the true old school way. You know what I'm saying? Um, doing it the pre 1989 way. Correct, correct. I think it was a little like correct me if I'm wrong, Matthew. I believe it was Little Mermaid that started to paint this stuff on the computer. Is that correct? Yeah, that was the final film to use the original multiplane camera, and then. And then they only use the cap system for like the very last shot. Interesting. See, this is why I love Matthew. He is a wealth of information when it comes to animation. Absolutely brilliant, Matthew. Yeah, because Absolutely. with uh, Beauty and the Beast, uh, the the chandelier and the ballroom scene, they use computer animation. Uh, carpet oh. from Aladdin, they used CG. Uh, and when CG. he was flying through the Cave of Wonders, the escape, I think, was all computer, yeah, right? That was computer. And uh, the wildebeest scene for the stampede in The Lion King uh, was done on computer. Incredible. Yeah, it's incredible. But that's, see, that I like that. I like that. Like, I agree with Matthew, that 90s era where they were weaving in this traditional and CGI stuff, I think it worked really well. It was that perfect yeah. balance, you know? 
the between between the old and the new, you know. And the '90s did that perfectly with everything, with everything, and, and mm-hmm. everything was so balanced in the '90s. Like it was such a great. It had its foot in the past, where it felt like the stuff of Walt's era, but then it had its foot in the future and felt fresh enough. Mm-hmm. So when yeah. you have movies like Beauty and the Beast, you have movies like Lion King. They felt like stuff that Walt would have done, but yet they were new, though. You know, um, this perfect stuff, man, just perfect. But even other studios were like that. Like even like Warner Brothers, when Warner Brothers in the '90s were in their heyday, the animation, things like Animaniacs look like and felt like the old Looney Tunes, but it was new and fresh. You know, mm-hmm. Tiny Tunes felt and looked like the old Looney Tunes, but it was new and fresh. It, it was like that, just that perfect. There, seriously, the 90s had like some serious balance in the force. It really mm-hmm. did. It did. It really did. Now, Matthew, speaking of Moana 2, what are your thoughts on this movie coming out? I know you're, um, you're, you're excited. I'm Go quite ahead. bullish on it, and I think it might be good. One thing I would like them to do, though, is to do a bit of a of an RP, you know, Moana's father, Chief Tui. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Look, interesting. And, and you know who played him, don't you, Chief Tui? Go ahead let the audience know, Matthew. Tamora Morrison. There it is. <laughs> Tamora Morrison. What, what about what, And you think they can get him back? You think that's possible? Yeah, they should get him back. But they've got to bring back Dwayne Johnson as well. Yeah, and it's looking and it's looking like they will. It's looking like he's probably going to be on board for that. So we'll see. That that's kind of like the word on the street. What are your think? What are your thoughts, uh, George, on Moana too? Yeah, I think it was the the appropriate way to go. Um, rather than do the Disney Plus um, series, uh, just mm-hmm. kind of combine it all in one big package for uh, for a sequel. I think that's what fans would probably want anyway and obviously the uh the views and the ratings on just the the small little 10 second teaser trailer pretty much <laughs> answered that question um i do think that they really should scrap the live action i really don't think there's a need for it especially with the sequel yeah. um coming up right now I, I mean it's like you're moving forward to just move backwards um on, on a movie that's really not that old you know, it's not even it's, a decade old. You're already making a live action. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Although Universal's doing that with How to Train Your Dragon, too. It's like, I don't get that either. That's kind of new, you know? Yeah. yeah. But but here's the thing. You know, here's the thing. It's like, you're right, though, George. Like, when you had a Moana series and you had no movie coming out, the live action at least made a little more sense. But now it doesn't make any sense. Because now you're coming out with a sequel to the animated movie. And you're going to have a remake of the original movie. It just seems like a little too much. Yeah. You know, um, and to kind of address the, the fact that a lot of people, you know, are talking about, you know, Disney is on like a, a sequel kick, you know, uh, we're, we're getting Moana two, frozen three and four Zootopia two toy story five. Yeah. Did, did you see the latest despicable me trailer for the 15th movie they're releasing on that one? Yeah, exactly. It's like all these companies are doing it. If it's if if there's a movie that strikes gold, they're gonna keep on continuing the franchise as long as people continue to go see it. Well, it's, and right, it's it's common sense, right, Jordan? And and that's exactly look. You're, Disney's going through a, a financial struggle right now, so you're gonna lean into the sure bet or the surest bet. Well, yeah. the surest bet is gonna be Frozen. Moana, <laughs> these these proven franchises. So that's what you do when when there's a lot of like when there's a lot of um, financial stress. You go towards at least the most certain the the most certain thing that you can do. Why would you go into these riskier things when you're already kind of on the struggle bus financially? Exactly. Now that doesn't mean that they're they're going to abandon original movies because Disney is smart. They know you have to release original movies to create new franchises. You know, Frozen at one point was an original IP and right. it paid off. Right. So Disney understands that this isn't the end of original movies, but right now when you're dealing with right now, when you're dealing with such financial strife, you have to go towards what is like the surest bet and the frozens and the toy stories and all that stuff. That's, that's the surest bet. But yeah. what are your thoughts, Matthew, on that in terms of sequels and what have you, what, what are you feeling with that brother? In my now, opinion, you're on mute. Yeah. <laughs> It makes sense ends, ends to a point, but 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 in my opinion, live actions make no sense. I just hope that Moana and it is hope is the last of these sequels and Snow White as well. Not not the last of the sequels, the last of these remakes. 
The, the issue with the remakes is it's a double-edged sword where they fall on either one side of the trap or the other, right? Because you make the remake because of the nostalgia factor. But the, 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 but the new movie has to justify itself in and of itself for you to bother go seeing it. So you have to change it. But when you change it, you cut into the nostalgia factor. So you kind of screw yourself over. I mean, me personally, it, it's it's to the for me anyways. If someone asked me, what would you rather have? I'd rather have a sequel to an animated film than a live action remake. So would I. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree with you, gentlemen. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, OK, so one final question before we take off today, gentlemen. Um, Matthew, I, I will start with you. Post Iger, because and and I ask you this a lot because the landscape is constantly changing. So I always like to hear your, your 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 feedback on this. As of right now, I think last time we talked, you were saying that like you think that Stags and Meyer are the front runners. Do you yeah. still? And I know that's your preference. Yeah, but do I you do still, still feel that way. You still feel that they're the front runners. So yeah, far, I we do haven't too. heard anything else. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, far, I do too. There's really no one else right now that I even feel that they're even considering as contenders. Uh, you know, at one point, um, I mean, Josh might have been considered, but I think after the yeah. disaster that happened with Chapek, I don't think that they're going to want a, a, another Parks guy. I don't think Wall Street would want it. I don't think the board would want it. I just don't think, and I personally don't think it's the right move to have a a, a Parks chairman take over. Um, especially someone like Josh, who is not really reliable on his word, you know, and he's, he's kind of like all over the place. And then as far as, um, uh, oh gosh, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, the Dana, female, Walden. Dana Walden. Dana Walden. As far as Dana Walden, I actually had bigger hopes for her um, over tomorrow because especially since Iger was taking them both everywhere. You know, mm -hmm. he was taking them to the, the, the award shows. He was taking them to Disneyland Paris. But I feel like Walden kind of stepped in the doo-doo when she was kind of on that Kathleen Kennedy hype train. And it's mm -hmm. like, oh, gosh, you know, if we put someone as a CEO, then what, like, direction is she going to take the company that when you kind of put the microscope on Kathleen Kennedy, and I'm sorry, you know, as a person, she's probably a very nice woman, but she needs to go. I'm sorry. Her time in Lucasfilm is done. But when you have a person who is like on that hype train, it's like, OK, then if you're going to do that with Kathleen Kennedy, what are you going to do with the rest of the company? Right. And right. I think yeah. that kind of diminished uh, Walden's chances. Yeah. When she was. Yeah. There was rumors that she was really bullish on Kathleen and didn't didn't want to let her go and things like that. And yeah, I agree with you that that did put a bad taste in my mouth for Dana Walden. And I was very bullish on Dana Walden. You know what I'm saying? I was very, very bullish on Dana Walden. I think she's a very competent, smart, brilliant woman, brilliant, brilliant executive and what she's done with like, you know, Disney Entertainment and what have you. She's even got like, um, you know, political chops. Politics aside, you don't have to like Joe Biden. I get it, you know, but she's working with the Biden administration. And while that's it, why that is important for Disney is we're seeing that when it comes to like, you know, the whole drama in Florida, you know, you need that political, you know, those chops to sort of do this whole game with Disney because you're dealing with a lot of other governments and a lot of other government officials when you're CEO of Disney because you're you have parks all over the world. You know, you have, you know, Florida, you got Shanghai, Hong Kong you know, Paris. So to have that, to have that knowledge, I think comes in handy. I think she's got a great resume. Now, but No, I have a question for you fellas. Do you feel like, God, I'm like, I'm like blanking on names today. OG. Uh, -oh. uh, uh, the CF, the new CFO, Hugh Johnston, Hugh Johnston. Do you feel like now I feel like he could be a, a strong contender. Yeah. Oh, very. Yeah. Like know, I feel like honestly, if it came down between Meyer Staggs and somebody else, I think it would be him. I mean, he look what he did for Pepsi was, and I don't follow Pepsi like you know full disclosure, you know, but I read up a lot about about Hugh Johnson, and he did a fa fantastic job at Pepsi. And Pepsi's actually a bigger company than Disney. I didn't even know that until I read up on Hugh Johnson. Um, so for Bob Iger to lure him away from Pepsi and bring him on to Disney was a huge feat. That was not a small feat at and all. And his first time doing the earnings call, he didn't miss a beat. No, he was great. He's got interview chops. I saw him, I think it was on CNBC. 
um, again with the CNBC. I don't know why they decided to go there, but they do. But like, um, but he, he, you know, he he knows how to talk. You know, he's um, obviously brilliant. Um, he's on the list. Yeah, I would agree with you, George. I think that he's probably. Let's see how he does. You know, he, this is the first earnings call with him. Let's see how he does. You know, Iger, Iger doesn't leave now for another what two years? Two I believe. years. Yeah. So he's got like a couple years, or maybe a little less, because they got to announce him before he leaves. Right. To kind of prove himself, he might be the guy. You never know. You never know. Or maybe it'll be a dual thing. Maybe it'll be a Hugh Johnston, you know, Tom Stags thing. Yeah. Who knows? You know. So we'll see. But gentlemen, fantastic conversation as always, Matthew. It is always fun having you on, brother. We will have you on again very, very soon, sir. Thank you so much for coming on, and joining us, talking about post Bob Iger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, uh, Matthew, you just remind everybody where they could find you on social media. You can find me on Instagram at Matthew Thomas Muir, all one word. There we go. Matthew Thomas Muir, all one word in the description down below on Instagram. And then over here, we got the freshly uh, shaven Italiano over here, you know, looking <laughs> looking dapper, looking dapper. Um, and just remember, folks, if you can't grow a beard, just be patient. It'll grow on you. <laughs> George, George, if you can let everybody at home know where they can find you on social media. Absolutely. You can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Disney George. You can also find me on Instagram under the Disney Italiano. And, of course, you'll find me here on my home base at Orange Grove 55 with Citrus Corner with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. There it is. There it is. Everybody comment down below with all your thoughts on your predictions and your speculations in regards to the post Iger Walt Disney company, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We like to hear it all down below. Thank you so much, so much for watching this episode of the orange nerd show. Everybody have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye everybody. <laughs> Thank you.